Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. XRP doesn't have any real value? Could that be true? Well, no, of course not. That is stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D, stupid. And I'm going to share with you in this latest Moon Lambeau ha to jam comments from a couple of a Twitter threads here, which, by the way, I don't know about you guys, but this is actually one of my favorite types of videos to create, where I get to share with you opinions back and forth from people that just disagree on a topic, and then just let them battle it out in their arena of ideas, and then anybody watching this interaction gets to choose who they think makes more sense. And so when it's, um, you know, somebody that's an, an educated XRP enthusiast versus a toxic Bitcoin maxi troll, that's a good time. Like that, that's a fun time a lot of the time. So um, in, in this case, uh, the, the first one I'll start with has to do with somebody that just, I don't think they could articulate. I, I know they could based on what they were. They couldn't articulate the use case of XRP. They think that it's valueless and any coin could do what it's doing. And then uh, there's another person that thinks that... Um, <laughs> Ripple can just create XRP all willy-nilly because that's the type of stuff that people in the Bitcoin community, uh, many of them believe that because they've been told that as an outright lie and then they've not been curious enough to find out if this outrageous claim is true. And uh, and then this comes up also. Did you know that there was a bug in the Bitcoin code that allowed 184 billion Bitcoin to be created? Mind you, there's a max supply of 21 million with an M. Well, 184 billion with a B was created. It actually happened. Uh, that was over a decade ago. And uh, that actually could not have happened with XRP. Um, so I want to be clear at the outset, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who likes making YouTube videos as a hobby. And in my early days, this is how I learned a ton of what I learned about Ripple and XRP and, and crypto in general, was just watching people duke it out on Twitter, seriously. I mostly was a fly on the wall. Sometimes I'd interact, but I just, day after day after day after day, I was just like a sponge absorbing as much uh, information as possible. And even now that I... Um, I understand a lot more than I did back then. It's still fun to see these interactions. <laughs> you know? um, and so uh, it, Ripple employee Matt Hamilton was tagged in a tweet along with a couple others. And Matt Hamilton did respond here. And uh, th this was uh, originally written by an XRP community member named Shabo who wrote, So I just received this today. I'm speechless. Um, then he tagged uh, David Schwartz and then uh, Anders L., and, uh, and at Hammertoe, that's Matt Hamilton. Matt Hamilton is a Ripple employee. And, uh, and he, he wrote, what would your answer be? Please get back to me so I can educate him as I'm not pro enough to spell it out clearly. And he shared this screen grab. <clears throat> and so uh, here's, I don't know who this is that he was talking to and it doesn't matter, but he's showing this, this private message back and forth. It's between he and, uh, and some other guy here. And here's what the other guy wrote that doesn't really know anything about XRP, it seems, but sure has some opinions. Here's what he wrote. You use Bitcoin to store your money because it's a real collateralizing asset. The proof of work is what ensures the value and underpins the whole crypto space. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's only partly true. Proof of work, you can say it's... Uh, uh, ensures the value, secures the system. But uh, what we're really talking about here is one method for distributing Bitcoin, getting it out into the wild. You can have a different consensus alg algorithm like um, like, uh, like XR the XRP ledger has uh, for, for eliminating the double spin problem because that's really a, a big part of what we're talking about here. And you can have a bunch of other nodes that make that work. And so this idea that proof of work is the secret sauce, I, I firmly disagree. That is not true. Uh, it's, it's definitely not true, as evidenced by the fact that XRP exists and doesn't use proof of work. There is no mining. So that's flat out wrong right there. Um, and then it said it underpins the whole crypto space. Uh, that's actually not true. There are actually a ton of cryptocurrencies that don't use proof of work. And more and more you're seeing uh, the, the space get away from that because it's just archaic technology that has serious constraints. And so clearly misinformed on that point. But then he wrote the following because it just gets worse. Uh, XRP isn't that good because there's nothing unique about it. Okay, let's pause there. <laughs> like the the the, the ad, there is no other coin exactly like XRP. 
So in that sense, it's unique. As far as a lot of the things that make it incredible for payments, uh, it's actually extremely rare. And XRP is arguably the best cryptocurrency on the planet for, for payments uh, because it's blazing fast. And uh, it's very energy uh, efficient, and it costs fractions of a penny for a single transaction. That's super duper rare right there. It's also one of the most liquid cryptocurrencies on the planet, which is an attribute that you can't code. It just is because it's been adopted. And so that's something to have a, to have a coin that's incredible for payments that's also as liquid as XRP is. That is unique. And so this individual is absolutely incorrect, does not know what he's talking about. And then wrote... Any bank or hedge fund could create their own copy of it and use it to fulfill the role. So whilst XRP does all the hard work with the legal battle, others uh, can just swoop in and profit their hard work and expense. Okay, uh, XRP is not doing any hard work with a legal battle. XRP is not being sued. XRP is a decentralized cryptocurrency. Ripple is being sued, and Ripple is Ripple's legal team is working to, to, to legally battle the SEC. That is not XRP, so... That's wrong. Everything about this is wrong. I'm glad that I'm here to fix this, though. This is Because otherwise, it's like, this is why we can't have nice things. And so, but anyway, on this point of any bank or hedge fund could create their own copy of it and use it to fulfill the role. Yes, any cryptocurrency can be copied, just in forks. Like Bitcoin, uh, there's Bitcoin first, and there's Bitcoin Cash, there's Bitcoin SV. And Matt Hamilton talks about this, so I'm going to bring up his comments here shortly. But, um, you know, if this idea of just XRP getting supplanted as a use case of a bridge currency just because something else happens to exist is completely absurd because you need to have a business that wants to implement something as a bridge currency. You'd need a sales team to acquire customers so that, that uh, the technology actually gets uted, used. Uh, there would need to be sufficient liquidity for this brand new coin that you just created because at inception it's worth zero. It has no liquidity. And then you need to have customer support and a whole bunch of other stuff. So what's the business model to make that happen? And then if you're utilizing a bank coin like a stable coin, are you solving for trust? Well, the answer with a stable coin or a central bank digital currency is absolutely no, be be because uh, it's back. It, it's got to be backed by something, right? If it's not something that's openly traded on the market and it's centralized, then it's backed by a fiat currency. So it's basically just a new representation of the existing digital fiat currency, like United States dollars. There are digital dollars already, and when you're talking about a central bank digital currency, it's just a new form of that. Um, and, and so, no, it's not the case that uh, a hedge fund or a bank, I don't know why you said hedge fund, that's weird, like the, the hedge funds are not in the, in the business of cross-border transactions, like that's not, they're not a fintech, fin, hedge funds are not fintech companies, this guy's utterly clueless, could not be more clueless, um, and so... Uh, then he wrote, if, if something was to replace Bitcoin, you would see it coming a mile away because they would need to get uh, heaps of people to mine it. Uh, no, that's uh, clearly not necessarily the case here. Um, heaps of people to mine it. Uh, well, XRP and many other cryptocurrencies don't need to be mined, so I, I don't know why your brain's even going there in the first place. And apparently you're oblivious to what's in the space right now, including XRP, so I'm not sure you'd see anything from a mile away. Uh, I, I seriously am not convinced of that. And so Matt Hamilton responded to that with the following. Their point that anyone can duplicate XRP is nonsensical. Anyone can duplicate any cryptocurrency. It will never be the same as the original, but you can do it, like Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. And then Shabo, who started this thread, wrote the following. What about his first column there regarding proof of work values the whole crypto space? And uh, to that, Matt Hamilton responded with the following. Again, fairly nonsensical. Yes, Bitcoin leads the price of the asset class and many follow, but the value is from what Bitcoin can do, not how it does it. Proof of work adds cost, not value. It's a means to an end. Um, and then Shabo wrote, also, how can you duplicate something to a certain grade, but not fully? What is the process? And so then um, Matt Hamilton responded, you can easily duplicate the network, but it would not be the same network. The value is what we collectively deem it to be. And so if you create a new Bitcoin or XRP network, it would have a different value. And I read that and I jumped in and I wrote the following. Exactly. This is why people need to differentiate between value and price. They are not the same. Something has value to someone if it's useful, if it solves a problem. Price is just referencing the open market price of an asset, what someone is willing to pay for it. Um, and so then into the next thread, somebody named Molly wrote the following. 
We know the exact Bitcoin supply schedule for centuries in advance. You can't say that this about any other cryptocurrency, uh, or, I'm sorry, currency or asset on the planet. And then Matt Hamilton wrote, well, apart from all those other cryptocurrencies, because there are a ton of them. Uh, and then, so I'm not sure why this Molly individual thinks that. And then she wrote a question. She wrote, like, Doge? Question mark? And then Matt wrote, LOL, no. I was thinking more like XRP. And then somebody named George jumped in at this point and wrote, you really think that they can't mint more XRP in the blink of an eye? And so he thinks that Ripple clearly can just make XRP. Even in 2021, there are still some people that actually believe this. And so Matt Hamilton, Ripple employee, wrote, of course they can't. How would they? And then George responded with control C, control V, with control C obviously on the computer being uh, the copy mechanism, and control V pasting. These are just keystrokes. And then Matt Hamilton responded with uh, create a new separate chain, i.e. fork it. Yes, you can do that if you want, just like you can with Bitcoin. But that's not minting more XRP any more than forking Bitcoin to create Bitcoin Cash was minting more Bitcoin. Exactly. And so I don't know why people actually believe this stuff. And so that tweet uh, where Matt Hamilton's questioning, of course they can't, how could they? As in, how could they actually, how could Ripple create more XRP? George retweeted that clearly not believing what Matt had stated. And he wrote, the director of developer relations at Ripple X says they can't issue more XRP. And so he's in stunned disbelief at this point. Matt Hamilton uh, handled this uh, with the following comment. Ripple can't issue more XRP. The XRP ledger literally has no mechanism to issue any more XRP. The function simply doesn't exist. And to add it would require 80% approval of the network validators and every node on the network to no longer run the invariant checks they do. Each node on the network, and there are around 1,000 of them, runs an invariant check on every transaction to ensure that it doesn't end with more XRP than it started with. If Bitcoin had this, then the value overflow bug in 2014 would not have happened. And so I'll wrap up the video with, with that. I'm not now. Don't worry, not now. Uh, but, but I'm going to circle back around to this because I do want to talk about that Bitcoin incident that created all that Bitcoin. And he wrote 2014 here. Um, I'm only aware of this happening in 2010, so he may have had a typo or he's correct. And then there's an incident, an additional incident that I'm just unaware of. But I did a quick Googling and I couldn't find it. So I'm not 100 percent sure. But just to be clear. Uh, so then George responded, and I actually appreciate this next comment from me. He wrote, okay, I actually read that because Matt shared a, a link to some specifics on what he just cited there. He said, okay, I actually read that now and I was misinformed. I also checked the node requirements. While hefty, they're within reach, unlike Ethereum's. And so I'm not sure why he thinks that, um, you know, a node requirement in what way it's hefty. I mean, like I remember Matt Hamilton stating, he may have been stating pounds, but... It would cost him like 15 pounds a month to like run a validator. I remember seeing other people in the past saying that, you know, running a, run a validator in the United States is like 20 bucks or something. And so you just, and you don't get a reward for it. It's, that's why like, if you do it, it's because you just value the network and you want to participate. Um, but as far as hefty requirements, uh, I'm not sure if he means from a technological perspective, but I've never heard any complaints on that. I've definitely not. And there are plenty of participants today. And so um, Matt Hamilton then responded with the following and what he cites here. I've thought many a time. And he wrote, The bit that baffles me is the lack of critical thinking some Bitcoiners have. They will accept what they have been told about XRP without question, no matter how illogical. If I told you fish can't swim, that goes against everything you know about fish, so you'd likely question. I don't understand why people, when told the XRP ledger is not open source or Ripple can mint more XRP, there isn't a small part of their brain that goes, that doesn't sound right. How would XRP be so widely adopted if that were true? And then do some research. But that's not how they operate. They just, they're spoon fed these lies about Ripple and XRP. They believe the garbage. And I think that they want it to be true, actually, which is part of the problem. And then that's their reality. They're living in a false reality. They don't want to do research and research takes effort on top of that. And this is the world we're living in. <laughs> Ideologically driven people that just are not interested in the truth. And so then as far as this, this value overflow bug, here's an article from Decrypt from August 26th last year. The day someone created 184 billion Bitcoin. 
Uh, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. We're not too far off. Around 18 and a half million Bitcoin are already in circulation. But on August 15th of 2010, that limit was destroyed by one person who managed to exploit a flaw to produce 184 billion Bitcoin. Let's set the scene. Back in 2010, Bitcoin peaked at around, uh, was it 30 cents? Um, so low, in fact, that in May that year, someone spent 10,000 Bitcoin buying a single pizza, now worth over $110 million. Clearly, Bitcoin wasn't the cryptocurrency juggernaut it is today. Like many new technologies, it experienced growing pains, one of which was a bug that generated billions of Bitcoin in a couple of transactions. In August of 2010, Bitcoin's source code was exploited by someone who to this day remains anonymous. Enter block 74,638, the fateful block, that created 184 billion Bitcoin with two addresses receiving 92 billion Bitcoin each. Now, the anomaly was quickly spotted on the Bitcoin talk forum by Jeff Garzik, a Bitcoin developer who today is the CEO of Block. Uh, the issue was termed an overflow bug. The code for checking Bitcoin transactions didn't work if outputs were large enough that they overflowed when summed. The bug that caused the value overflow incident was corrected very quickly. It took just five hours before a soft fork was rolled out, uh, which reset the Bitcoin blockchain to before the bug, the bugged block and included code to reject output value overflow transactions. And so there you go. That's what Matt Hamilton is talking about. If Bitcoin had had the invariant check that XRP Ledger does, that would not have happened. And so there you go. 184 billion Bitcoin actually once upon a time did exist uh, before a Bitcoin code was updated via a soft fork. And now you know. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time. To the moon, Nambo.